Welcome. Thank you very much for taking the time. You know, one thing I want to mention before I begin this seminar, this webinar, is we've been having a lot of webinars. So I don't want to take too long. I just want to give you some what I think are super creative ideas that are going to uh, help you sell a little bit more, especially when as this um, pandemic lets up. Now, most of you are familiar <clears throat> with the protective equipment um, offered by STI. Um, so uh, with that in mind, oftentimes uh, it, it's difficult to know every model. And in trade shows, we often hear from different people, different installers that, oh, I didn't know STI did that. So that's uh, the process today. We want to let, let you know a little of what we do. But before we begin, you know what? How do we sell STI? You know, STI is an accessory. And that part is important. It's always used with something else. Nobody goes out and buys STI just to have an STI protective cover. You know, they're going to use it with something else always. So, you know, the way we um, sell it is with strategic questioning. Well, as you can see from the, from the slide here, cross-selling. That is a well-designed question which teaches the equipment, uh, teaches the customer what the equipment does. For example, uh, Mr. Customer, do you want to eliminate false alarms? Pretty reasonable question. That being said, he now understands in the back of your mind, you have something that's going to help him eliminate the false alarms. If he says no, he's not interested, well, you go on to the next thing. However, if he says yes, you've just opened the door to a possible sale. Okay. Um, so as you can see, that um, cross-selling takes us from the people who offer the cup of coffee or the customer says, can I have a cup of coffee? And uh, we turn around and say, well, would you like some cake with that? And of course, in this example, the cake is STI. So the stopper two provided a unique solution that became world famous because this design reduced and eliminated false alarms. Many of you know this equipment out there. Um, this, I'm going to call this Series 1000 of stoppers. Why? Because there's models like 1100, 1200, um, 1130. And um, these models are still made. They're very popular. You can see a, a little wire hanging down from the one on the bottom. You know, when you would pull that cover off, it would just sort of hang there. The design was fine. Fits the pull stations and false alarms were reduced. However, you know, the company keeps on inventing, keeps on innovating, and they developed what's called the universal stopper. And this is the series, the 13,000. I say 13,000 because there's little different digits in there, depending on how you want to mount these. You know, is it surface mount? Is it recessed mount? And the list goes on. Um, the 13,000 series has a, has a rounded top. The newer 14,000 series has a flat top, low profile. So some of the differences you're going to see on this is that instead of having that wire, instead of it just hanging down, um, it has a hinge on the top. And it's not just any old hinge. It's I'm going to call it a piano hinge because it goes all the way across the top, and it's nice and strong. People can lift it up easily. You can get it with or without a sounder. Um, I prefer a sounder because the idea is to eliminate false alarms, right? Um, and that sounder helps in that. The low profile, same idea, but lower profile. Um, this one actually has not only audio, but a visual. So it'll blink, it'll flash. The idea is we expect that somebody who's going to create a false alarm doesn't want to be seen. Well, if they don't want to be seen, um, that noise is going to attract attention and, and going to try to keep them away. So here's a unit that comes um, with a weather seal. It's lower profile. It's a smaller unit. Um, and if that's not enough, it's it's less expensive than the 1000 series. But many of you know the 1000 series. Keep on using it. No problem at all. So one of the tips I want to point out to you today is this breakaway tab. As you can see from that um, image on the bottom there, there's this little tab. And I think my my video is going now. You can you can see it here. I have it right here. Now it's solid. When you buy this unit, you're going to have to drill that out. 
And after you drill it out, you can put in this breakaway tab. So this breakaway tab gives you a little extra assurance against those false alarms. Now, this isn't a tie wrap. It is going to break away. Okay. So I advise you to get the special breakaway tab from STI, but it's just another comforting feature that you could offer to uh, your customer. Once again, the idea is, yes, we do protect that um, pull station, but more importantly, we want to eliminate false alarms. Um, weather resistant buttons. So, um, you know, this is a, a button that we introduced some time ago. So here is a button that's made for outdoor use. Now, let's take that with a grain of salt. I'm talking IP54. Um, it's a momentary closure. Um, it is not latching like the other options you have. So if it's a momentary closure typically used in access control, this would work fine. The gasket's included. Um, it's illuminated so people can see it. Um, and in harsher conditions, you know, uh, recently we were quoting something where the rainfall was torrential, uh, in which case I said to them, you know what, I don't want to go with just the uh, weatherproof or the weather resistant button that you're seeing there on your screen. So let's use one of the universal covers. The universal cover you're looking at, it's available in a variety of colors. It can come with that back box you're looking at. <clears throat> and I should mention that back box is sealed. So there's some extra protection for any of your electronics. So whether you can get away with just um, the button itself, weather resistant, or if you need a little extra protection, you know, you should consider STI uh, for that. One of the things I don't talk about too much are, are the wire cages. Now, once again, STI, their whole um, focus is protecting equipment subject to damage, subject to vandalism, um, subject to theft. So, Here's equipment, wire cages, and they do a very nice job. It's a, a nine caliber wire. I'm, I mean, you can drive a car over it. It's not going to crush. You can stand on top of it. It's very strong. It is made to resist that. Typically, a lot of the STI equipments were developed for the fire industry. That being said, they're all UL because you need UL when you protect fire equipment. But nowadays, we're seeing in a lot of the schools where they're putting in new speakers, new LED screens, et cetera, that they want wire cages for them. And they're available. So there's another little hint when you're protecting um, equipment out there. Because the equipment itself is designed for a certain function. It doesn't always have the protection that you need. You know, switching gears, you know, we always think it has to be security related. A lot of these polycarbonate um, cabinets that STI makes, and you know, let's talk a little bit about polycarbonate. It's not acrylic. It's not plastic. Polycarbonate is the same material that you find in a um, in a motorcycle helmet. You know, it's strong. It's resistant. Um, and in our case, well, we tend to go for a clear, transparent polycarbonate so people can see what's inside. You know, in a lot of the factories out there, they want to put um, medical equipment, emergency equipment, first aid equipment. They might even want certain tools um, that are readily available, accessible. But as you can see uh, from the diagrams here, we've included a little alarm. It's a self-contained alarm that you're seeing on top, an audio visual that'll run on nine volts so that if somebody does access that first aid, that defibrillator, whatever it is, there's a sound, there's a, there's a light, there's a strobe that goes off. Management is advised. But we have to ask the question. You know, so when you're in that factory floor looking to put in CCTV, perhaps access control, you might offer this to the customer. Remember, strategically asked questions are going to help your sales. <clears throat> A lot of the folks out there already know the 6400. You know, the 6400 is great at controlling um, access through those emergency exits. 
You know, they're called emergency exits. They're not called everyday exits <laughs> for a reason. You know, they're there so people can get out of a building. Unfortunately, we've seen um, in different installations, owners will chain up that door, in which case, well, guess what? It's no longer an emergency exit. And there have been some very horrible stories of what happens when there's fires inside. So it's a local alarm. It runs off of nine volt battery. You know, you put it right on the door. Different languages available if you're interested in that. And there's a little magnetic, um, a magnet that comes with it because there's an internal switch. So as soon as somebody opens that door, you get a nice loud buzz and it also flashes. What some people often ask me is, Walter, you know, I want to let reception know. I want to tie that into one of my panels so I can get a notification on that. Well, the wireless version of this comes with a little wireless transmitter inside, and it can report to that unit you're looking at the bottom of your screen. That's, um, that is an eight zone receiver. You can see the model number there if you're interested. So this will receive eight different um, doors. You can take it into uh, the zone of a panel if you want, or several zones of a panel. So there's enunciation there. And that way the receptionist or somebody in a command and control room can know what's happening. Somebody's opening an entrance. Distance in a perfect world, 1,000 feet. However, you know, 300 meters. But, you know, uh, we have to understand when we're inside a building, we're probably dealing with walls, rebar, metal. And so you have to watch that. But a 1,000 foot is a great transmission distance. You know, COVID-19 did a lot of things. And one of the things it did was make us afraid of touching surfaces, doorknobs, handles, and buttons. So, you know, no, STI has always had no touch buttons. Um, but they've introduced a new series. This new series is stainless steel. It's available in single gang, narrow, double gang. You know, in the double gang, there's a reason for it. It's not just to take up more space. It's that more visibility so that people can easily see it. You don't have to touch this button. All you have to do is wave your hand in front of it. I would say the detection distance on that is ooh, maybe about five, six inches. So that's fine. This face, face plate is made of stainless steel, a medical and food grade stainless steel. So, um, you know, I think this button brings a lot into play. But once again, it's that strategic uh, questioning. It's going to help you sell a button like this. You know, Mr. Customer, would you prefer a button that you don't have to touch in order to open that door? Simple question. Yes, potential sale. No, just move on to your next, uh, your next order of business. You know, and once again, as you're going through these buildings, you might see sprinklers. You didn't install them. Maybe you did. But, you know, any building that has sprinklers should really consider the quick stop fire sprinkler shutoff tool. This is a tool that <clears throat> you apply directly to that sprinkler that has gone off, to that leaky sprinkler, which may be dropping liquid on your clothing, on your jewelry, whatever the store has, on your personnel. And instead of turning off the whole system, which, by the way, you turn off your whole system, you now long, no longer have a, a, a fire system in use, um, you can shut off that individual sprinkler. You know, why people don't offer this more often, I'm, I'm curious, because it's just a handy tool that makes sense to have. You know, you can see the model number there, but of course, you know, if you speak to your salesperson over at Full Protection, they can help you find the, the equipment you need. And that's a nice one. It already comes packed in a protective um, enclosure so that it can be displayed. People can get it regularly. Nobody's hiding it in a desk drawer or under a bunch of um, other tools out there. Um, the new IP66 uh, NEMA 4X uh, cabinets, you know, we have a variety of sizes because I don't know what kind of equipment you want to protect, 
but NEMA 4, non-metallic, it can be out of fiberglass. We also have it made out of polycarbonate, as you can see from the image here, uh, transparent cover. If you prefer a smoke or tinted cover, also available. I mean, I've seen people put monitors in there. Um, wireless equipment. Wireless equipment is great. Can't put it in metal because that wireless doesn't go anywhere. But if you're talking fiberglass and um, uh, and polycarbonate, that radio signal will get through. So something nice to think about for you folks out there who are doing city surveillance, smart city applications. Well, you need a place for that switch, that power supply, and who knows what else. Polycarbon is light. It doesn't um, uh, disintegrate in some environments the way metal will. You know, small scratch on any metal, even if it came in NEMA 4, um, it's often going to begin to rust and deteriorate. So that's the container. It comes all enclosed. However, there's accessories you might want to think about. And, and this part of the conversation gets interesting. You know, we have back panels. What's a back panel? Well, you know, it's something where you're going to mount your equipment so you can get to everything nice and easily. It's all orderly. Your wires come in. Actually, not only can we use a back panel, we can use a swing panel. That's a panel in front of a panel so you can open it up and have access to all your equipment. Some environments require heaters and thermostats. By the way, sometimes that heater is because you're in a cool environment. But other times that heater is to dissipate any moisture in there. Um, so depending your application, we have that. Pole mount, if you're going to put it on a pole. Actually, air conditioning in those very severe hot environments. And you need to maintain your equipment cooler. Otherwise, it's not going to operate. It's going to overheat. Vents, fans, all those accessories are there. And by the way, one of the things I did not mention are the different calculators that we have online so that you can determine size, type of um, um, type of cabinet you want, whether it's fiberglass, polycarbonate, mounting options. There's a whole list of accessories there. Once again, can get confusing. We have a lot of information. Talk to your salesperson at Full Protection. Talk to us at International W. We can help you as well. One of my favorite pieces of equipment are these. You know, we call it a siren strobe, but when I talk to people, I call it a self-contained alarm. Why? <clears throat> well, it's a strobe. You know, part of an alarm is you want the sound. In this case, it's a strobe and a sounder. And that sounder is configurable. There's 32 different tones out there you can choose from. It's important you want to differentiate it from any other tone out there that might be happening. The one on the top, that's interior only, nice modern design, operates on 12 or 24 volts. It has an input. So you can tie it into your panel. You could tie it into something else if you wanted to. The one on the bottom is the one I prefer because it's IP66. I can use that outside as well. 12, 24 volts. I can operate the strobe and the and the uh, siren independently. One can stop, the other one can continue. Maybe I only want the strobe, okay. So I just make the strobe go off. It has one input and I can tie that input to an output from a panel, a button, a switch. So all of a sudden I have this unit which has one zone, right? It accepts one closure. And at that point, it will give me a timed release of sound and visual, audio visual. Now, I mentioned the 12 and 24 volts, which increases its flexibility, but it also operates on a nine volt battery. And sometimes you have a customer that just wants the simplest way of knowing if a door is open, a window is open, a cabinet is open, and this could be the device. Nine volt battery, depending on how often they're gonna access that piece of equipment, is um, <clears throat> you might have to change that a year, every year, just like your smoke detectors. At home. As you can see in that drawing, a little bit small, but the programming is done with dip switches. So all your choices are very easy to make as far as timing, as far as um, siren sound, as far as strobe pattern. 
So nice unit to, to consider when you're uh, walking a job and looking at the opportunities and you are using your strategic questioning to cross sell to offer some accessories. Global reset, you know, this is the design. It's for fire for you folks out there who are uh, dealing with fire. It's that design that was made famous over in Europe. You know, it's a, I'm going to call it a break glass, but there is no glass nowadays. You know, it's, it's got a, a polycarbonate cover. You press it, the button um, uh, depresses, generates an alarm. It's latching. You can have a protective cover over, um, over the unit. Why? Reduce, eliminate false alarms. It can come with a logo so people understand what it's for. It could come with the word fire on it so people know. But it's that design that so many people recognize. Difference here is you don't need that European back box to, um, uh, to mount it. This one uh, goes on a regular back box, a you know, two by four. So the mounting is a lot easier, a lot more consistent with probably what you're doing nowadays. And that's it. That was a ton of information we just gave you today.